And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my name.
For your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. Selamat pagi and good morning church. If you are new here for the first time, we would like to welcome you. Feel free to say hi in our chats and if you need if any one of you needs prayer, please do click on the request prayer button and the elders and leaders will pray for you. Today is communion Sunday. Do prepare the emblems the bread and the cup beforehand so that when we partake communion together later, we would be ready. Let me encourage you as we enter our last month of 2020 with this psalm. This psalm encourages us to come to God with thanksgiving and praise. Psalms 100, 1 to 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing, knowing that the Lord, He is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. 
enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Church, in all seasons in our lives, let praise and thanksgiving be in our hearts and on our lips because His love endures forever and He is faithful. It is because Jesus lives that we can face our tomorrows. Let us not spectate but participate and engage in today's worship and celebration as we come together in our homes. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your grace for us. Thank you, Jesus, for dying and paying the price of sin for us. Let our hearts and lips be filled with thanksgiving and praise, knowing that we belong to you. I pray that each one of us would encounter and experience you today, that our lives would be transformed to reflect you more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Phil, lead us in today's scripture reading. Good morning, church. Today's scripture reading is from Romans 15, chapter 15, verse 4 to 13. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scripture, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and the encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God of Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarch, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Rejoice, O Gentile, with his people. And again, praise the Lord all you Gentiles, and let all the people extol him. And again, Isaiah said, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles in him, were the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope will fill you with all the joys and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. I hope these words of God will bless you all. Good morning, Church. Let us come today and worship God with all our heart and to give God all the praise. Today, we'll be doing something special. We'll be starting off with a JC song called The Greatest. So, Church, are you ready?
Hi Church, please take the emblems that you have prepared for communion. We want to invite those who believe in Jesus to partake communion with us. Parents, if you have your children who are believers and followers of Jesus, we encourage you to lead them in this time. Communion is a time for us to remember, reflect, renew and rejoice. To remember what He has done on the cross. He died for us and He rose on the third day, conquering sin and death. Our sins are forgiven and He who knew no sin, that is Jesus, took the sin of the world on Himself so that our relationship with the Father is restored through the righteousness of Jesus. And we today are called children of God and made alive in Him. Reflect, we where we have sinned. Reflect where we have sinned. Areas that displease the Father. Things that we have done wrong and things that we have not done that God has asked us. And reflecting on His promises for He is faithful and He is quick to forgive us when we turn back to Him. Renew. To renew our commitment to Christ. To love God with all of our heart, our mind, our strength and to love people around us. 
it is also to renew His mission that we are called to be ambassadors of Christ, proclaiming, sharing the good news and making disciples. And lastly, church, to rejoice because Jesus has set us free from sin and death and we are alive in Him today. Rejoice because Jesus is coming back for His church and we will be with Him for eternity. So church, let's take the break. For I have received from the Lord what I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was betrayed took bread and when He gave thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. Church, let's take the cup. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often you drink it in the remembrance of me. So as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let's take the cup together. Church, we will have a time of reflection and communion with the Lord. Uh, we encourage you at this time to pray together as a family or commune with the Lord if you are on your own. So take this time now. Father, we thank you for giving us your son Jesus for dying on the cross for us that we might be renewed and restored in you. Let us not forget and always have a heart that is grateful of what you have done for us. And also let us love each other as our na- and our neighbours as how you have shown your love to us. May our eyes be fixed on eternity and the things of the world grow dim where we will be rejoicing and be with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are doing well and getting used to this new normal. Um, I'm starting to be less forgetful to wear a mask uh, when I go out. I used to walk uh, to my car and start the engine before realizing I forget to bring my mask and I have to walk back all the way up. Um, now, as soon as I walk out the door, I recall, ah, I need to wear my mask. I must say it's an improvement since March. This year went past just like that. And the next thing you know, it's December. Where was my 2020? And what did I do? Well, 
I hope you can reflect back this year and realize that God was right beside you this whole year. We are on a series called Your Kingdom Come. And we are speaking from Jesus' teachings on Matthew chapter 5, also called the Sermon on the Mount. Why we are on this series is because we are in an age where the world is shunning away godly values, pressuring us to compromise and dilute God's principles. And in this season, we believe God wants us to be concerned about God's glory, God's ways, and God's perspective. Often we go about our lives without thinking too much about what does God think about this situation, or how should I live my life so that God is glorified in me and through me. So today, we will be exploring Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, that goes, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled, or they will be satisfied in my version. Jesus is giving us the key to understand how we ought to pursue righteousness by being hungry and thirsty for it. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is to have right standing with God. It is like saying, Jesus, you are righteous. You have right standing with the Father. But to say, Josh, you are righteous, I find that hard to take. Because the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So how can Josh, a mere human, be righteous or to have right standing with God? So what did God do? God didn't lower the bar because we have sinned. No, He doesn't alter the Ten Commandments because I'm not really good at honouring my father and mother or keeping the Sabbath holy. No, He, he kept the bar and kept the standard for righteousness. But the problem is, how do we even reach that godly standard of righteousness? By having a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Let me give you two ways to hunger and thirst for righteousness, and lastly, the result of that. The first way is to have a healthy appetite. Healthy people have a good appetite. I know when I'm sick, my mom would often cook porridge for me to eat because I don't have an appetite. And I just want something plain that will not cause an eruption in my bowels. Those who are sick do not have a good appetite. So having an appetite is a sign of health. Now, apart from having a good appetite, what are you craving for? What is your diet like? Is it full of instant noodles and ice cream? Or are you having a healthy balanced diet with fish, vegetables, and an appropriate amount of carbs? You see, the Roman pagans back in the days of Jesus have a big appetite for a lot of things. A huge appetite to overeat. That is called gluttony a huge sexual appetite. And they indulge themselves with everything and anything because they have no regard for God. They live for this present life only without any belief and thought for the afterlife. Those guys are the OG YOLO dudes. If your parents don't understand that, later you can explain. So what does it look like to have a healthy appetite for righteousness? Well, we need to eat the Word of God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and my food is to do the Father's will. What is your spiritual food? What is the food you eat to sustain your spiritual man? What food do you eat to ensure your spirit is alive? and not dead. 
the spiritual food every Christian believer need to eat is the Word of God. We consume it with our minds and we digest it in our hearts and we store it in sufficiently for today and tomorrow we proceed to eat the Word of God again. Because we need to eat daily to be healthy. So do this for your own spiritual health. Devote yourself to eat spiritual food daily and do not neglect to eat so that our spiritual man is healthy, strong and sharp. We need to have a new diet today. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Have a healthy appetite. Number two is having a healthy order. One of the famous, most quoted verses that Jesus said was, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. We are all called to seek and pursue Jesus. We seek Jesus because he is the king in the kingdom of God. So when we seek after Jesus, we are seeking his kingdom. But many of us get this order wrong. You know, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all other things, not the other way around. In God's kingdom, in his way of doing things, we are called to seek God first. Seek a right standing with God first before we seek all other things. That is what Jesus teaches us. But oftentimes we seek all the other things first and then give God the crumbs, the leftovers, if we even have any leftover. That is the wrong order. God does not bless that order. God cannot bless that order. Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. He says, Seek first God's kingdom. That is our priority. What does it mean to seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness? Well, it is simply pursuing God first. God pursues a healthy relationship with us and He wants us to live the best life we can ever live with Him forever. So seeking God is like what the Israelites did in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 6 verse 6 to 9. It reads this, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Basically, do anything and everything to know God's Word, to follow and obey God's Word, and to teach your children to know and obey God's Word. That is what it means to seek first the Kingdom of God and His righteousness. That is what it means to hunger and thirst for righteousness. We need to have a healthy order. We need to reorientate our priorities. However, look at the life of Noah and Job. The Bible says that Noah and Job were righteous men. Noah escaped the flood and saved all the animals and started a new community. Job had double of everything he had in his lifetime. But these righteous men were not without suffering. They would not abstain from ridicule, mockery and pain because they were righteous. No, they had their share of pain and problems. But what they gained far superseded all the loss that they went through. You see, choosing to pursue righteousness like Job and Noah will cause us to reprioritize our life. Something's got to give. We are not abstaining from pain and problems, you see. But having a healthy appetite, a healthy order, we will experience health and healing. 
Remember the story of Abraham bargaining with God to not destroy a city if he can find some righteous men there? Abraham said in Genesis 18 verse 23, God, will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. And then later, Abraham negotiated with God, Okay, how about 45 people? Will you destroy the city of Sodom if you can find 45 righteous people? God said, no, I won't destroy the city if I can find 45. Then Abraham negotiates some more, until it goes down all the way to 10. What if you can only find 10 righteous men? Would you destroy the city? The Lord said, no, I won't destroy the city if I can find 10. Well, to cut the long story short, there wasn't even 10 righteous person that was found in the city of Sodom. And God destroyed the city but saved Lot and his two daughters. It's so hard to even find 10 righteous person in a city. But you know what? God always tries to find one righteous person. God found Noah and he saved the human race. God found Job. God found Abraham. And ultimately, God found, sorry, God sent his only son, the epitome of righteousness, Jesus, to save not only a city, but to save the world. Now, how did Jesus save the world? Well, Jesus became the righteous person that we should have become and taken our sins on himself and nailed our sins on the cross so that he can give us his perfect righteousness. When God the Father looks at us, he sees us justified and in good standing with him because Jesus has imputed his righteousness to us. It looks something like this. Imagine this is Jesus' righteousness. And he gives it to us because he has died on the cross for our sins. And now whoever believes in him, he gives us his righteousness. Jesus brought healing and health to everyone who is sick with sin. And that is all of us. We can be cured from this sickness called sin. And the only way we can be cured is to ask Jesus to heal us forgive us and restore us to a right standing with God. But I must say, it is not easy to live a righteous life on earth. The Bible says, Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. Just like Jesus. Jesus already said in John chapter 15, verse 20, Remember these words, Jesus said, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will persecute you also. The world is becoming more and more evil. People love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. So what do evil people do when they see light that exposes their evil deeds? They try to snuff it out. Come on church, you heard this before. You know it and you know it's coming. The word of God won't lie. Just like the promise of suffering and persecution is real, the promise of eternal life is even more real. If you believe Jesus' words and teachings, then you better believe it in its entirety. We don't just take the good promises of God and discard the ones that are not so pleasant promises. Come on, church. It's time to raise resilient disciples of Jesus Christ. Not some cotton candy Christianity. Let us wake up and have a healthy appetite for God's Word. A healthy order by prioritizing Jesus first over other things. 
And may we experience true health and healing to be filled with Jesus, to be filled with God himself. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Not they might be filled or they could be filled. No, the promise is they will be filled. Filled with what? Filled with God himself. I can't think of anything better for anybody than to be filled with God himself. That God will satisfy us, heal us, and give us eternal life and the right standing with the Father. He only fills us with good things. God fills us with the best things, in fact. Just like how He gave us His righteousness for anyone who believes in Him. To have eternal life and right standing with God. When we have a hunger and thirst for Him. Let us pray. Lord, we know You only fill us with good things. So now, would You come and fill us with Your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us wherever we are. Raise an army of resilient disciples who hunger and thirst for righteousness. May your kingdom come and your will be done in these lives who are set apart for you and for your name's sake. Amen. Make a commitment today to eat healthy, to establish a healthy order in your life and experience true health and healing in Jesus' name. God bless. Hello and good morning. Thank you for joining me as we lift up a couple of items to God in prayer today. Let's look to God. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this privilege of being able to just come together in spirit, although not physically, that we can come together before you. Just thank you for the joy that you've given and put in our hearts and the peace upon us as well. Today, we just want to specially bring before you our loved ones. May they be our family, our colleagues, our relatives, um, anyone that you have place a burden in our heart to want to see them in heaven. I just pray, Father, that you look to those. As we take a a, a couple of seconds to pause and think about those that we love and want to see saved. God, we bring these people before you because we know that it is in your heart that none shall perish. If you can leave 99 to look for a lost sheep, we believe you can extend your hand of grace and salvation upon these loved ones. I just pray, Father, that you open their hearts and minds to see the truth in you and give them the courage to believe. For when they believe and confess, then they will be saved. Father, give them the courage to do that. And only an experience with you, an experience of the living Jesus Christ, will they come to you? Can they come to you? Or in our own minds, or their own minds, it's difficult to believe and understand. But when they experience you, they will be saved. I just pray, Father, for their salvation. Open their minds and hearts so that they may be saved. And today we also bring before you persecuted Christians, persecuted brothers and sisters, people who are going through a hard time, First of all, Father, I pray for uh, uh, strength, uh, courage and resolve in their lives. Strengthen their faith in you. Remind them of what they have believed. I know it's counted all uh, blessing if you are persecuted for your namesake, but going through it is incredibly difficult. Just pray, Father, that you just look upon them right now and comfort them and lift them up. Provide them with anything that they need maybe material or spiritual help to be with them and bring people alongside them as they walk this journey. I 
pray, pray Father Lord that your word will also be strong in their life and their worship to you will be true I just pray Father Lord that you just ease their suffering as well look to them we we'll bring all this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. What am I going to do for Christmas this year? Dear. Many unbearable hours later. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Mm. I got a plan. Christmas 2020, yes, that's right. We're gonna do a four part harmony. Full blown choir, lots of instruments. Uh huh, you get it? It's gonna be good. Although we can't meet and makan together like we used to, but that's not gonna stop us from celebrating Christmas together. So this year we'll be having Christmas online. Our online Christmas service will be held on the 25th of December, which is a Friday, and we'll be meeting at 10 a.m. So mark your calendars and we'll see you guys there. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Stories of CLGZ where we share inspiring and encouraging stories of people from our community. Today I have Galveston. He is here today to share with us how God not only takes care of the big things but the little things as well. I hear that you have a very um, important story to share with us all about how God has really taken care of not only you but your whole family during this season so can you share with us a bit more i started a job uh, in september 2019 i think i shared to to everybody but uh, just around the corner come covid uh well put in this way uh, i think how management business is last one in first in out so i lost my job just when the covid came about so uh, yeah i was unemployed for easily six and a half months uh. Yeah. During that time of unemployment, how was it like? Initially, uh, in March, of course, you know, everybody was so with the COVID, right? So we still have a bit of saving. So things was okay. But as the month progressed, as a father, you definitely want to make sure there's food on the table. As a husband, you must be able to give a, set, uh, give a comfort level to your wife, you know. Um, to say it was not challenging, it's, it is an understatement. It's a battle every single day. Yeah. I think the first thing any 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 Christians will do or any anyone will do is like I did not complain why me but instead okay God I'm gonna be on my knees so every morning uh, before the crack of dawn I'm on my knees not because I'm complaining but I'm grateful I still have a roof you know uh, I've never been on my knees so deep uh, the turning is that when I put my face on the floor, I can even see some small, small cracks, which I never realized was there. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was challenging every morning. Yeah, uh, I think I, I, I was reading a lot on the word, or worship, but I think the thing that really got me through was uh, that, that uh, the community food bank. Uh, we, in that time, right, uh, what do you call it, uh, Pastor Silan and the church was helping of course, our Tumon family, and then we had some uh, uh, Bangladeshi and Indonesian. So it's like almost every week I'll be delivering food. Me doing that may be like helping, but actually it was helping me because every day is like sometimes twice a week. You know, I'm looking forward to it not because just delivery, but I get to spend time with them. And at the end of the day, I was like, okay, it's, I mean, I, I don't have a job, but I still have a roof. You know, I still have a bit of food, so it's not that bad. So mm. that kept me going. Literally, that mm. kept me going every week. I right. really appreciate, you know, even though you yourself were struggling financially um, and I'm, I'm sure emotionally having to, to provide for your family, but you still um, had the heart to, to give your time and your talent to serve um, God's people during this time. And through that, they actually blessed you, right? To, to their own lives. Yeah, true. Uh, um, myself and Indra, we even 
came to a point um, we were uh, I mean our prayer initially was God where do you want us to be do you still want us to be here in KL or in Damansara you know things are like you know I've sent CVs and CVs and, and, and even I even applied for you know the, the post laju to send things they didn't they didn't even accept me so I was like can't be that bad you know but um, in then one morning I realized I, we changed our prayer instead of asking God where do you want us to be either here or back in Sarawak right we change our prayer we say God where do you want us to serve and I can tell you it's almost instantly right when the prayer change eh, then things you know then all of a sudden I, I you know I got people hey um, can you come for this interview so, so because I did send all this thing as you know uh, we, we couldn't get interviews now so I started to see the difference is instead of asking God where me and my family should be you know uh, uh, my I we our prayer the family prayer is God where do you want us to serve where do you want me or Indra or Sanya or Gabriel where do you want us to serve mm. and I can not even a week you know we I, I was flooded with interviews I mean not a job we have interviews and then uh, you know, all of a sudden my neighbor was just giving us one uh, actually I still remember was a uh, it, it was a chicken supposed to be for the sun but Eric cook it so the sun's not coming just give so hey do you guys uh, like roasted chicken or something so that week, the prayer changed from Sunday after one of one of one of the the podcasts I, that I, I read I, I watch. So we changed we changed the prayer. Where instead of saying where do you want us to be, God, say where do you want us to serve, and it really works. It's great that you know God has seen you like we mentioned earlier. Not through the just the big things, but the little things as well. The big things being that you've managed to find a job. The little things is that during that six months period, you know your family never lacked. You guys had food from your neighbours and it was really great that you have a very understanding landlord as well who was able to you know let you uh, backdate your your rental and your payments um, so that's amazing um, you wanted to share this photo with everybody here and it's on the screen right now as you all can see it's uh, maybe you want to share with us what does this photo mean to you before I started my work that Sunday um, um, I was I was really I was a uh, going through a podcast and basically we're summarizing is that we have to use the small small things that we have in our hands it's like how the widow used the oil you know whatever that she has you know and god multiplied you know in the book of john uh when when uh, parable of john where the kid brought a fish and loaf of bread that little to feed five thousand, but god multiplied <clears throat> so i had that uh impartion of the little things right and two days before that uh <clears throat> pastor Cillian uh actually was uh, what's up me you know uh, good luck to your your first day blah, blah, blah. but he said something he said do not worry it's a new day you know and that word stuck to me you see the first day of my new job that i started on september 3rd 2020 it it may not be a big thing but to me sometimes we, when we walk in the spirit with the lord you know we see no little things and and this morning that morning when i sat down i saw that article the little things and then there it says a new day so, I don't really think we should believe in luck or circumstances. Everything is positioned there. It's just that you have to be sensitive enough and then to acknowledge God, is that you? You know, it, it's sometimes like a nugget that God and the Holy Spirit in you shows you. you know? So, for me, when I saw that, I, I was joy. I even took a picture and I sent to everybody. It's like, you know, the, the new small things that I have in our hands, you know, this new job. And, and it's a new day. So, I really believe God will carry you. But in order for you to do that, you have to surrender everything. That means um, don't use your intellectual like, oh, I'm good at this, I should apply for this job. Or I'm smart, I should. No. Literally surrender. That means God is all yours. So yeah, that, that was my first day experience. First day and many more days to come, I hope. Yes, <laughs> many more days to come. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Thank you, Galveston, for sharing your story. And um, those who are watching, I really hope that you have been encouraged and inspired by this family and this man's walk with God. Um, do reach out to Galveston if you would like to hear more about the testimonies that he has to share of God's faithfulness and how God really has brought him through, through the little things and the big things. So that is all we have for today. Thank you all for your time and we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye. Wow! What a year it has been. We are now in December 2020 already. We will end the year very soon. And what a year it has been for all of us. A worldwide pandemic year. And here in Plank Valley, 
we are all under, still under MCO. You know, we have RMCO, CMCO, and at one stage in Daman Sarah Perdana, we had EMCO as well. And this year has not ended, uh, but we want to end with something good, something positive, even though it has been a tough year, I think, for all of us. And so we want to encourage you to join in in this season of giving and blessing. You know, the wise men from the East came bearing gifts to Jesus. They brought gold, frankincense and myrrh. And these provisions uh, that were given to Joseph and Mary, you know, took care of their needs as they went through hard times when they sought refuge in Egypt. And so in this season, we want you, and that is if you are able, you know, to bless several of our church families who have a real financial needs. Whatever that God has blessed you, you know, share that blessing and uh, with those who have little to show in this pandemic. There are two categories of people that we want to help. One is if you know someone who is in dire need, you know, would you just step in personally and uh, help out where you can financially as well. The other one uh, is this, we, we know of several families in our church uh, that need some financial assistance. You know, this year they've either lost their job, lost their income, uh, depleted their savings, or they are just basically now just struggling, you know, to meet even some of the basic needs that they have. And so we are inviting you to be part of this blessing. We are collecting this free will offering uh, from now till uh, two weeks time. And if you are able to give, please bang in into the church account and indicate uh, the purpose of giving as the blessings. We hope to reach a target of 6,000 ringgit and to be able to disperse to at least uh, six families uh, in this church uh, before this Christmas. The Lord bless you as you prayerfully consider and so into this Christmas blessing for those who are in need. So join me and the many others who will be making this truly a season of giving and blessing. Hey Church, time for this week's announcement. First off is regarding our online Bible study, which will be held on Mondays at 8.30pm, where we'll now be studying the book of 1 Kings. To join our online Bible study, the Zoom meeting link will be sent to the WhatsApp Huddle group. We would like to thank all of you who have been giving to the Community Food Bank, as your contributions have been a big help to many people during these times. There are a few groups that the Community Food Bank has been providing for during the past few months. Firstly, our seven or our Asli families, migrant workers from Bangladesh and Indonesia who were affected by the recent fire incident in Damansara Padana, and lastly, our Iranian refugee. Once again, we'd like to thank all of you who have been faithfully giving, and if you would like more information regarding the community food bank, do contact Pastor Syrian with this number given. Last but not least is online giving. Your offerings and tithes can be done online. So do take note of the necessary information you may need for your online transfer. Church, I believe that God has spoken and ministered to us in different ways. The early church in Acts, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold their possessions and goods. They shared with everyone who was in need. I urge you to take this privilege, CLGC, to participate in the Christmas Blessing Initiative to bless those who are in need. Also do mark your calendars on the 25th December as we will share more information on how you can host and participate in reaching out uh, to loved ones during this time. And uh, during this time, we believe hearts the hearts of people are open and it is a good opportunity for us to share the good news of jesus matthew 5 6 blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness 
for they shall be satisfied. And to be healthy and being healed, let us have a healthy appetite. Our spirit, soul and body are not separate entities, but it is all one. Each part affects the other. What are we feeding our spirit man? Feed our spirit man, church, with the word of God. Let us have a healthy order, that is to put our priorities right. To seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. So the question today is, in what area will you reorder your lives? In what area would you reorder your lives? Please feel free to reach out to the elders and leaders anytime through the week if you need prayer or if there are areas that you need help. And church, let us continue to love God, love people and to be the salt and light of the world so that the world will see the good works and they will glorify the Father in heaven. So, God bless you and have a great week ahead.